the most embarrassing factors of the pseudoscience of macroevolution theory is that almost since its beginning, and even up to rather recent times, the evolution industry has been wrought with fraud, sloppy mistakes, and purpose deceit. These claims are well documented and many will be presented in this film. The most disturbing thing is that some of these frauds and deceits are still held out today in so-called science textbooks as fact. The ardent evolutionist hopes against hope that the ignorant masses will not see the shell game being played before their eyes. But alas, films such as this one, books and scientific articles are going worldwide at lightning speed thanks to the internet and the masses are being awakened. In 1859, in his book, Origin of the Species, Charles Darwin said, Why, if species have descended from other species by insensibly fine graduations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? This is from chapter 6 of his book entitled, Difficulties on the Theory. Scientists who believe evolution have been searching for transitional forms ever since, but they have not been able to find them. Therefore, fraudulent fossils have been manufactured and deceitfully presented as transitional forms. This is particularly interesting since virtually every modern evolution textbook will proudly proclaim that the preponderance of fossil evidence is one of the many proofs of the fact of evolution. Yet nothing could be further from the truth. According to anthropologist Tom Kemp, in his famous review, Mammal-Like Reptiles and the Origin of Mammals, in no single adequately documented case is it possible to trace a transition, species by species, from one genus to another. Dwayne T. Gish, Ph.D., in his book, Evolution, the Fossils Still Say No, states, Even though this transition is supposed to have taken 100 million years, not a single intermediate fossil has ever been discovered. Dr. Colin Patterson, senior paleontologist, British Museum of Natural History, states, I will lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil for which one could make a watertight argument. It is easy enough, he says, to make up stories of how one form gave rise to another. Evolutionists believe that macroevolution, one kind of living organism eventually becomes another kind of living organism, has been proven in the fossil record. However, if there is overwhelming evidence in the fossil record that macroevolution has occurred, then why is it necessary to make fraudulent fossils? The reason is because contrary to what is commonly believed and taught, macroevolution has no proof whatever in the fossil record. Let's examine some of the more famous evolution hoaxes. The Archaeoraptor, the most recent, perhaps the most infamous evolution fraud, was committed in China and published in 1999 in the journal National Geographic. Dinosaur bones were put together with the bones of a newer species of bird and they tried to pass it off as a very important new evolutionary intermediate. National Geographic later had to print a correction and further research revealed that they had been fooled by the fraudulent fossil. The Brontosaurus. This dinosaur, presented in many evolution textbooks, never existed. It has been discovered and well chronicled that the body skeleton of one dinosaur was found without a head. Some four miles away, another head from another skeleton was found and placed on the original body skeleton. This head was from another distinctly different dinosaur. Thus, the Brontosaurus was deceitfully created by the evolutionist. The Piltdown Man was promoted as the missing link between ape and man. Piltdown Man was identified by a fossil skull. Piltdown Man was in science books and taught to children in schools for almost 40 years before the skull was examined to see if it was actually authentic. When it was finally examined, it was determined that the top of a human skull had been attached to the jaw of an orangutan. The fossil had been stained and painted to make it look old. The Nebraska Man, discovered in 1922, was accepted as an early form of mankind. But all that was actually discovered was a single tooth. It was later discovered to be a tooth from an extinct form of a pig. From one tooth, an entire fairy tale was invented and taught to children as fact. Java Man was a fraud. Ramapithecus was a mistake. Peking Man was another fraud. Neanderthal Man has been proven to be a race of modern men with severe arthritis. These and other examples should cause any prudent person to be at least suspicious of supposedly scientific reports about human ancestors. Another example worth mentioning is that of the peppered moth. Evolution textbooks declare, 
Most peppered moths were light colored in the early part of the 19th century, but during the Industrial Revolution in Britain, the moth populations near heavily polluted cities became predominantly dark colored. Experiments suggested that predatory birds ate the light colored moths when they became more conspicuous on pollution covered darkened tree trunks, leaving the dark colored variety to survive and reproduce. To demonstrate the camouflage of the dark moths, many books when explaining evolution have pictures of peppered moths on tree trunks. As ridiculous as it may seem, the pictures are themselves faked. Peppered moths do not land on tree trunks in nature. So where did the pictures of peppered moths on tree trunks come from? Dead moths were glued or pinned to the tree trunks. This fact has been known about since 1980, and still the fake pictures are being published in textbooks as proof of evolution. Most biology textbooks have a section about evolution. One of the favorite proofs commonly included in such a chapter is the similarity of embryos from a variety of animals and man. This information may be traced back to embryologist Ernest Haeckel in the mid-1800s. Haeckel published pictures he claimed were the embryos of fish, salamanders, tortoises, chickens, hogs, calves, rabbits, and human beings tried to show that the embryos looked similar in the early stages of development. This was supposed to show that they all had a common ancestor. The problem is, the pictures were faked. This fraud was known and published as early as 1894 by Professor Adam Sedgwick of Cambridge University, and as recently as 2000 by the curator of the fossil collection at Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, Stephen Jay Gould. Haeckel's fraudulent drawings are presently in at least 10 major biology textbooks published from 1998 through the year 2000. Spontaneous generation, or abiogenesis, or chemosynthesis. George Wald, evolutionist and professor of biology at Harvard, admits, one has only to contemplate the magnitude of this task to concede that the spontaneous generation of a living organism is impossible. Yet here we are, as a result, I believe, of spontaneous generation. Notice that some scientists are so steeped in the theory of evolution, they cannot bring themselves to fully accept the absolutely irrefutable scientific proof of laboratory experiments. It has been claimed that the geological column, as a faunal succession, is not just a hypothetical concept, but a reality because all Phanerozoic systems exist superposed at a number of locations on the Earth. Close examination reveals, however, that even at locations where all ten systems are superposed, the column, as represented by sedimentary thickness, is mostly missing. The global stack of index fossils exists nowhere on Earth, and most index fossils do not usually overlie each other at the same locality. So even in those places where all Phanerozoic systems have been assigned, the column is still hypothetical and purposely deceitful. In spite of these and many other well-documented frauds, deceits, and lies, the evolutionary fairy tale continues to be taught as fact to this day. But not only is it not fact, for the most part, it isn't even remotely good science, much less honest.